Okay, everybody, this is a tutorial video about the reserves market graph. This is the graph that we use when we have an ample reserves system. That is what the United States uses right now, and we sort of innovated and created this system. And you're only going to use this graph when you are given a question that states that you are using an ample reserves system. If you need more info about ample reserves, go check out some of our other resources because on this today, I am just going to work with you on how to graph and then show you a question from an AP exam on how this might be shown to you. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is just draw a set of axes. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to draw this and I want you to watch the whole thing. And I don't want you to draw it as I'm doing it. And then I'm going to tell you to pause the video. And then you can take a moment and recall the tips that I gave you on how to draw this because it's actually kind of a weird, complex graph to draw. So I just want you to take it in and then you can take a moment to pause. Okay, so what you can do first is label the axes with me. So go ahead and label the y axis policy rate, and go ahead and label the x axis the quantity of reserves. Now, the policy rate on all the materials I've gotten from the College Board, it's never abbreviated. It is always written out as the full words. So even though on other graphs we have abbreviated things like interest rate or price level, I need you to write the full words policy rate. They're not long words, but I want you to put them there. The other thing is try to keep them up at the top and not down the side or taking up too much space because you're going to need that margin to draw some other labels. Okay, so now be patient, just take it in and let me explain what I'm doing. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right about here, um, not at the tippity top because I wanna give myself some room and you'll see why in a little bit. So the first thing is I'm gonna draw outward to the right a flat line and it doesn't have to be long, but it has to be long enough that to an outsider, they clearly can see that there's a little plateau or an upward bound, as we call it. Then I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw a diagonal and I'm not going to go far down. Notice how I stopped with enough room here. And the reason why is because if we have to bump this whole thing downward, we need to leave space for the future. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here again and I'm going to draw outward a flat line and then I'm going to label this the demand for reserves. If you recall from some of our other materials, this downward sloping area is the part of the graph that represents the money market graph that we learned earlier in this unit where you have that downward sloping demand for money. And we see that where these two lines intersect, the demand and supply for money, we have the nominal interest rates for the borrowing of money in our economy. And this is called the money market graph. And the important thing here is that it's not the same as the reserves market graph. And there's different things that can happen with it, but they're sort of siblings in the same family. All right, I'm going to leave it up here on the right just to refer to later on, but you don't have to draw it if you don't need to. Okay, so we're not quite done drawing the graph. So again, just wait a second and then I'll give you a moment to pause. I'm going to go about halfway in this graph to draw the supply of reserves. Okay, and it's a vertical line. And similar to the money market, we're going to put a capital S, and, but instead of an M, we're going to put an R. And we're going to say quantity one. And then over here, we're going to see that lower bound. We're going to draw a dotted line to the y-axis, and we're going to label it policy rate number one. That is the reserves market graph. So go ahead and draw that. You can pause the video. Okay, now that you've drawn this, let's talk about what can happen. So in an economy like the United States, when we want to discourage people from spending money because it's causing inflation, we want to discourage them from putting more money out there. 
we can't do anything about their incomes. Like the money they're making is what they're making and they're going to spend it. But we don't want more money to be out there because that's going to create more inflation. So what the central bank does is they raise interest rates. So in the money market system, all they would do is sell bonds. And by doing that, this increases interest rates, right? So in the ample system, selling bonds doesn't change the interest rate because we are in this flat part. Therefore, the only thing we can do is just increase interest rates. So how do you show that on this graph? The first thing you do is you just take your pen or pencil and you go slightly above that flat line and you draw a little arrow that goes up. And then the trick is, I need to make that a little bit shorter. <laughs> the trick is you have to trace this downward sloping curve. And when you get to about the same distance that you had your up arrow here, here you're going to stop and you're going to draw a line that's parallel to the demand reserves below it. And you're going to put little arrows here as well. And that is how we show an increase in what's called the administered interest rates in the economy. Because remember, the upward bound is an interest rate. The lower bound is what we call the policy rate. It's where we're targeting interest on reserves and federal funds rate. So rather than have all of those interest rates on this graph, we use a catch-all term, which is the policy rate. This is how you would show a contractionary monetary policy. So you're raising interest rates. So I have the green on here. So I'm just going to show you this, that this is an increase in the administered interest rates. Okay, and that was used to contract the economy. If we make money more expensive to borrow, then people will borrow less of it. We won't be adding to the money that's circulating in the economy, and therefore we can tame inflation. What if we had the opposite scenario? What if you wanted to expand the economy? What if there's not enough money flowing around and you want people to use their credit cards, you want people to borrow money to buy cars and to build homes and to buy homes and all that stuff? So you would lower or decrease the administered interest rates. So how do you show that on the graph? You show it the same way, you just do in the opposite direction. So just remember the little keys here. You're going to draw that flat line, and I'm using a different color so you can see that, out to the diagonal. You're gonna trace the diagonal, bring it down about an equal distance, and then you're gonna do your downward arrows DR1. I'm starting with those original black lines again, so I'm just going to use ones instead there. And I'm going to call this policy rate number two. And this should actually be a two as well. So again, all you're doing is bumping the whole thing down. The, the mistake that I see students make is they don't trace the diagonal part and they draw the whole thing about a half an inch over. And I'll show you what I mean. And I'm gonna use this pink pen. So sometimes what students do is they bump it out correctly here, but then they take it out too far and they move the whole thing. And there's a completely new demand downward slope here, and that is inaccurate. So you want to avoid that. Again, you want to just trace this diagonal piece when you're bumping it around. Okay. So that blue line would be a decrease in the administered interest rates. One of the things that's frustrating to me as a student of this is that we call these the administered interest rates but on the graph, we don't call them that. We call it the policy rate. And 
as a teacher of this and also as a student of this, it frustrates me because I feel like they should be the same words. So I'm just putting that out there in case that's something you're wondering. So what would this look like if it was on an AP exam? So last year in 2024, and maybe when you watch this, it will be years ago, 2024. But in 2024, for the first time, the students had to draw the reserves market graph. So in 2023, all they had was like a multiple choice question, or they had a a prompt like D, where all they had to do is explain if the interest rate administered interest rates were either going up or down. Whereas in 2024, they actually had to draw the reserves market. So that was the first time students had to do that. So in this question, I didn't give you the beginning of it because it doesn't really matter for your understanding because you can see that it says that Alpha's bank is considering using monetary policy to close a recessionary output gap. So what that means is that they need to expand the economy And if you're going to expand the economy, you are going to make borrowing money less expensive. So therefore, you're incentivizing or encouraging people to borrow that money. So the answer that I would plug in for this one is decrease administered interest rates. I have a little coaching tip for you. If you say reduce the policy rate, you will not get credit for Part D. You have to say administered interest rates. Okay. For part E, it now asks students to then draw the graph that shows that. And this is where I get frustrated because it says, you know, draw correctly label graph in the reserve market, show the effect of the action taken by the central bank and D on the policy rate. So again, we're saying administered interest rates in part D, but our graph says policy rate. That is accurate. That is true. That is what you're supposed to do. I'm sorry. They're not the same words. Okay, so what would you do for E? You would do the blue graph that's on here. So you would start with the black lines, you'd label all those things, you'd bump down the interest rate. So that's how you might see this in a question. As of right now in 2025, I've not seen students have to work with the supply of the reserves changing. If you had to do that, all you would do if they bought bonds or securities from banks, this is going to make the supply of reserves larger. So we would shift it to the right, just like we would do on the money market graph. And the key here is to make sure you put that second quantity in. On the other hand, if the central bank wanted to contract the money supply, they could sell bonds and they could make the money supply smaller. And you would just shift it to the left. The thing that's tricky with this and very important for you to pay attention to is you have to make sure that when you move that supply of money, that it is not touching that point where these two lines slope down and then go across. You want to make sure that this black line is in the middle enough so that if you need to move it to the left you have room to do it without going into that diagonal place or where they intersect because that would say a different message. So that's the reserves market. It's different than the money market because you're dealing with this flat piece, which is kind of a new look for us. So, you know, we haven't really had any graphs that do that. So that's what makes it pretty new for all of us. All right. Thank you for listening. And I hope it was helpful.